I mean, this is never ending. Inflation now is skyrocketing again across the U.S. Americans are struggling again to make ends meet. Well, when did they get a break? They didn't under Bidenflation. The prices of everyday items like bread, butter, eggs, milk, and more, you know, everything we eat, all up double digits. And it's forcing hardworking Americans to make sacrifices as a result, or as I point out, the ones that they've continued to make those sacrifices since Biden got into office. A Redfin study just found an alarming number of Americans are skipping meals just so they can afford to live in their home. So it's no wonder voters are not so hot on President Biden's very cold economy. I think he's been absolutely disastrous for the economy. Mm -hmm, I agree. Six, raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right, so that is everybody. Is there anything Joe Biden could do or say between now and, and, and the time you vote that would make you feel differently about feeling that his policies would not be as good for your family on the economy? Or have you, have you pretty much decided that Trump's policies would be better for the economy? I mean, I feel like he doesn't even take accountability for what's at all with what's going on right. in the economy. Not even accountability, like he's in denial that it's happening. He's gaslighting literally everyone in the process. Oh, my goodness, that was on MSNBC. He's bringing us together, Biden. Everybody agreed on screen, no matter how they vote, that this economy is bad for them. President Biden, however, dismisses voters' concerns and defends his economy. Here he goes. We have dramatically reduced inflation from 9 percent down to close to 3 percent. We're in a situation where we're better situated than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing. Okay. That is not true. It was 1.4 percent in yes. January of 2021. So we start off with something that's not true, and we go from there. Right. Well, there's a couple of things that he has said that are that are not true, and I've got the numbers. That's what we did. We did a fact check at Fox Business to look at what the president said versus the reality of what Americans are feeling and saying. To your point, January of 2021, headline CPI inflation was at 1.4 percent. That's when he took office. Yes, it jumped to 9.1 percent, and now it's sitting at three and a half percent. Okay, those are the numbers. Okay. But overall prices, everything that you're paying for, your shelter, your food, your grocery, groceries, uh, your, your groceries and your gas, 18.9% from when he took office to mm -hmm. now. That is the overall jump, okay? That's one thing. Wages have not kept a pace with inflation. That's the other important part I want to point out. He said that wages are rising faster than prices. Barely, barely true. In fact, since he took office in, in, that, in January of 2021, average hourly earnings after you factor in inflation, down 2.54%. But that's the Those inflation the numbers. that doesn't add in food and energy, as you just said. So well, how not, bad is it when you... I mean, because that, that's where that we spend most of our money. We have people now putting basic groceries on their credit cards again. Right. They had abandoned that under Trump. You ask people, how was it compared to being in the pandemic? It's worse now. No, we that, couldn't even go in But the, he anywhere. the headline CPI that we got yesterday does include does include shelter and food and energy prices. And so, you know, Wall Street has always traditionally looked at the core number. Well, forget the core number. Americans right. are feeling that. They're feeling the headline number. And that's what we were. That, that was so, the big story yesterday. And we got PPI today, which is wholesale. That was hotter than expected. And that energy, forget it. Oil is up right now. It's going to get worse. So what is Biden selling? I don't know. I don't have the Biden last name, so I didn't grow up being able to just get a job or work for an energy company with no experience. Okay. Just didn't grow up that way. <laughs> and, you know, we were paycheck to paycheck growing up, and we made things work with the little that we had. And if you got family members, friends that live in real America that aren't wealthy, you're feeling the heat as well. Because in my family, when all of us, when one person in the family is struggling, somebody has to step in the gap to help everyone else out. The president is going around the country right now hosting these kitchen table uh, little sessions. It's very choreographed. Do you open up the refrigerator? Mm -hmm. Do you ask the people how much milk is up, how much eggs are up? I mean, it's one thing to go out there and talk with the American people, but if you're not having legitimate conversations, you can't make policy that reflects their lived experience. You know what? As you're talking, Emily, something just hit me with different meaning for imagery that we saw yesterday. Like, we saw former President Trump doing what he always does. He goes out and he hangs out with people, and he may pick up a, a, a tab for this or a tab for that. He bought people food yesterday. Mm. <laughs> that is diametrically opposed to what we're seeing with Joe Biden. 
That's right. And I have to point out as well, um, you know, United Way operates the 200 plus 211 call centers here in this country that provide economic assistance. And they have reported an alarming surge for now a few years now under this administration where people are essentially making too much to be eligible and yet are feeling catastrophically under under asset, they don't they don't have enough, right? And they're saying up to at this point, 36 million Americans, 29 percent of Americans right now are above the poverty line. This this sort of false one that the federal government has drawn, but they feel the pinch, they feel the squeeze. Their savings are going out. They need help, and they call these helplines. They say we've never done this before. We need help, and then they're told, I'm sorry, you're not eligible. There's a whole swath of Americans that are feeling pain right now, but that according to this administration are doing just fine, but they're not. Marie Harf, uh, when will we get President Biden to give us a Bill Clinton moment? I feel <laughs> your pain. I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is this is tough for the Biden team because there there are some facts here. You know, when we took when 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 Democrats not obviously I'm not part of the administration, when the Biden team took office, we were teetering on the edge of a global recession because of COVID and because of eventually then a year later because of the war in Ukraine. They did do things like raise interest rates to try and give us this sort of soft landing we haven't tipped into. I mean, other countries in Europe are having horrific inflation, but much worse than ours. we're hearing from the administration so this is, we're not going to have so this a soft is, landing. This is what I'm, what I'm saying, that there are things the Biden team did that prevented this from being worse. That is a hard sell to voters. Right. And part of the reason voters are still paying more for a lot of goods, particularly poultry and meat, is because companies, even as inflation has come down, are making more and more. We are record They're not. corporate profits. That's not true, That Marie. is true. We it are, is not. We, it is that absolutely is, that is true. Let me, let me finish, that... though. Let me finish. We are record corporate profits across the board when people are paying more and corporations are making catastrophic right. profits. So this is a hard political one because they're doing a lot of the right things in the economy. All right. But it's Financial hard. expert gets the, the, the last no, word. The, comp the cost that the companies, their operations are costing more. Their input costs are costing more. That's the report of that I did this morning. Most of it. And that includes them. also wages and the p other pieces of the, and the real estate, all of it. So it's, it's. Well, they're still also trying to recover from a pandemic as well. It's not like we didn't shut businesses down exactly. as well. So I think we're all recovering. But he said he was going to make it better. And things aren't better. Well, he hasn't said build back better <laughs> in quite some time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.